Hello everybody, Dane here and welcome to my February 2021 reading wrap up. So the first book I have to talk about is A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. I listened to this on audiobook because Susie and I are doing a video on it for Lord Literature and Madam Media so I'll link to that channel below. I have read A Clockwork Orange before but it has been a fair old while so I re-read it via audio and then watched the movie as well. I do think I prefer the book to the movie although they're both pretty good. I would give like the movies like 3.75 and then the book is a pretty solid 4 out of 5. Um, I think if you like things like Catcher in the Rye, you might like it. It's like Catcher in the Rye, but with violence and also like... I mean, what I really enjoyed about it is like this moral question of whether the treatment uh, is worth it. Like what they put Alex through, they, you know, it's most famously got his eyes held open like this and he's forced to watch this footage. Um, and it's like all of this question of whether does the does the end justify the means, especially when the state's involved, and questions about free will and stuff. So I thought that was cool. Uh, and then I have just a whole stack here of Dr. Seuss books. Uh, so a bunch of them arrived in the post. I'm going to give them kind of an overall rating and just tell you which ones I read. Uh, they were all pretty good, uh, in between 3.5 stars and 4 out of 5 stars. And the ones that I got were, I had trouble in getting into Sola Solu. Punches and Bunches, Horton Here's a Who, Hop on Pop, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, If I Ran the Zoo, Dr. Seuss on the Loose, and to think and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street and all oh, I dropped that one too early. All the places you'll go. So yeah. Alright folks, just, uh, well, two books to wrap up for you today, but it's all out of one paper, well, hardback, I don't, <laughs> great start. Uh, so I read Foundation and Empire, 3 out of 5, and Second Foundation, 3.5 out of 5 by Isaac Asimov. Um, I guess, like, at the Foundation trilogy just isn't really for me. I, I think I prefer Asimov's short stories, I like his robot stuff as well, um, because I like it when he plays with the laws of robotics and see how they can be broken, and also when he plays with like psychology and like bigger concepts like time and stuff. This was much more like world building and politics, which was all very, you know, very well, but I just wasn't particularly excited about the story. Until the, uh, about halfway through Second Foundation, uh, we, we get, to, get to know Arcadia, who's a, a 14 year old girl who's a great character, so I really enjoyed her. So it kind of made up for itself from there, but um, yeah, it's not that I hate Asimov or anything like that, I'm a big Asimov fan, it's just these particular books don't really do it for me. Um, but yeah, I think there are more foundations, well, like, I think I have Foundations Edge and stuff up there. So I will get to them eventually, because I want to read everything that Asimov did, but I just wouldn't hurry to the uh, Foundation books. If you're interested in getting started with Asimov, Asimov I would definitely recommend like iRobot. Alright guys, just one book to update you on today, and that is Unburied Carol by Josh Malaman. I thought this was excellent, it's kind of set, I guess, during the American Old West. It's kind of historical fiction with that little smidgen of, like, almost magical realism in it. Um, actually, magic is a kind of a key theme throughout it, really. It's basically about this woman who has these fits where she goes into comas, and uh, not many people know about it, and then when one of the people that knows about it dies, her husband sees his chance to basically bury her for good. So uh, that's all I'm going to say about it. I enjoyed it quite a lot. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 and um, a solid entry uh, towards my favourites for the quarter, I reckon. Then I read The Secret People by John Bain, and it's actually John Wyndham, uh, it's his pen name. And these are all fairly early. They were published in like 1936, so well before he really hit his stride. It's one of those where the, the idea is quite interesting, but the story itself got kind of boring. Basically, uh, the Sahara Desert has been like terraformed, and it's been like irrigated with loads of water, uh, and then it's discovered that there's a race of like albino pygmies living beneath the the Sahara Desert and then there's like the Great Pygmy War it's it's nuts really but um yeah probably a three out of five to be honest well it wasn't great but I'm, I'm still glad I read it because uh, I want to read all the John Wyndham's stuff Alright guys, just got the two books to wrap up for you today. The first one of them is The Stars in Their Courses by Isaac Asimov. This is a non-fiction book, uh, basically a bunch of his different essays on different subjects. Uh, so we have under astronomy, The Stars in Their Courses, The Lopsided Sun, The Lunar Honor Roll, Worlds in Confusion. Physics, we have two at a time, On Throwing a Ball, The Man Who Masked the Earth, the looks and wall, playing the game, and the distance of far. In chemistry, we have the multiplying elements, bridging the gaps, and the noble prize that wasn't. And then in sociology, we have the fateful lightning, the sin of the scientists, the power of progression, and my planet tis of thee. And uh, 
those sociology ones are really interesting because he was talking about overpopulation and basically saying like at the current exponential rate of human growth we're gonna literally have every planet in the galaxy populated the same like the, the same level of population as Manhattan during a lunch hour within like 6,000 years it all holds true up to today as well and I mean the only drawback of this was when it was written so first published in uh, 19 well it was first published in Great Britain in 1974 and the copyrights around 69 to 74 so obviously science has changed a lot since then but also a lot of it hasn't so uh, really interesting I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 and then I read Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins, which is the second book in the Hunger Games trilogy. Uh, I've been reading this because Susie and I are going to be doing a video on the Hunger Games. You're all right down there, Biggie. Once I got outside, hang on. And uh, yeah, I mean, my thoughts so far on it have been pretty consistent with, with, with my thoughts when I first read it. I will say I've been enjoying hearing it narrated in an audiobook by a professional audiobook narrator slash voice actress um, because obviously it's written in first person from Katniss's point of view so it actually kind of enhances the realness there and also I don't generally like stuff written in first person so the fact that um, it's being read as an audiobook actually I think gets me past that sort of little bit of dislike for it there I do think Catching Fire is weaker than the first book and in my memory the third book was weaker still however I would still give it a pretty solid four out of five all right guys just got the one book to wrap up for you today that is Playing the Moldovans at Tennis by Tony Hawks this is a non-fiction book uh, which literally does what it says on the tin Tony Hawks goes off in an insane quest to try and play the Moldovian national football team at tennis and uh, yeah, that's about it. He, he, he got bet that he couldn't do it, basically. He got bet that he couldn't beat them all. So he decides to go and win the bet. Uh, entertaining stuff, probably like 3.5 out of 5. I think it might be the weakest of the Tony Hawk's books that I've read. He previously did Round Island with a fridge, where he tried to go around the outskirts of Ireland with a fridge while hitchhiking. He writes about these books where he goes off on these challenges, doesn't he, Biggie? So his friend, that he was watching England's football team play, ow! play the Moldovan football team and he bet his friend that uh, he could beat every Moldovan player at tennis so he ends up tracking them all down and beating them all at tennis it's alright, uh, probably the weakest of his books, he also did Round Island with a Fridge where he went Round Island with a Fridge and uh, the other book that he did was One Hit Wonderland where he um, he previously had a one hit wonder and so he tried to write another one basically overall quite humorous 3.5 out of 5 it was all right and then we have giant's bread by uh, agatha christie writing as wet mary westmacott uh, described as a spellbinding novel of romantic obsession i suppose it does have romance in it but i mean i'm not a big romancy reader um, but it does have some cool other themes so like the main character is a musician uh, who to begin with he hates music he's actually afraid of a piano and calls it the beast um, but he kind of learns that he likes things like orchestras where all the different music comes together, you know but Then he goes off to fight in the war um, So lots of different themes like that in here and uh, yeah, I, I, I thought it was alright I gave it probably a strong 3.5 out of 5 It was on, on course for a 4 to begin with but um, it sort of lost momentum a bit near the end But it did what I quite like uh, in books that, that like Stoner by John Williams was similar Where it told an entire life from start to finish and I quite like that so yeah hello everyone a couple of books to update you on today the first is the naked son by Isaac Asimov so this features what's his name uh, Elijah Bailey and also our uh, Daniel Oliver who is uh, a robot and it's like a robot and human detective team essentially so uh, it's kind of a cozy mystery set in space um, they go to the planet of Solaria and we see all the differences between their sort of civilization and our civilization so on Solaria people kind of don't touch each other and that sort of thing and they kind of communicate through like almost like holograms basically so um, they live on these huge sprawling estates with loads of robots but don't actually see other people uh, in person and we kind of see the effect that has on society we also see um, Asimov is really good at making robots kill people by finding ways to break the laws of robotics which are supposed to be unbreakable and he does that again here uh, overall four out of five did enjoy and then we have The Thornbirds by Colleen McCulloch this beast this has been my bedtime book 
since before Christmas, I think. Um, so I've been chipping away at it. The main reason I wanted to read it is because there's a character in it called Dane, and I am named after him, or at least in part. I'm also named after Dane of the Iron Hills from The Hobbit, uh, but they used the spelling of Dane from the Thornbirds because it was, you know, more normalised and uh, anglicised, I guess. But uh, yeah, pretty good. It's kind of an epic, sprawling novel. It's been kind of compared uh, to Gone with the Wind and been described as like an Australian Gone with the Wind. It spans the entire lifetime of this woman called Maggie. Uh, Dane is actually her son. Um, and she has him, she falls in love with a priest basically and there's this like forbidden love thing. She ends up getting married uh, to a husband that she doesn't love. There's a big fire that's very dramatic. Uh, yeah, definitely interesting. I was going to say definitely recommend but I don't, not to everybody. If you like those really like long, uh, very sort of slow plot but very character driven literary fiction novels, uh, I think you'd like it. I'm glad that I did read it and um, it's certainly an impressive achievement just to have written a book like this I think. Um, I'd probably give it, based on enjoyment, it's a 3.5 out of 5. But uh, yes, ticked off at last. All right guys, got a few books to update you on today. Uh, I have actually filmed some wrap ups, but they went missing the files because of my hard drive. Long story. Anyway, I reread The Hunger Games Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins via audiobook. That was a 3.5 out of five. I do feel with that series as though it sort of slowly goes downhill. So it starts really strongly with the first book. The second book's pretty good and the third book's just okay. But hey ho, it was enjoyable to reread that. Then I read The Rest of the Robots by Isaac Asimov. So this is basically a collection of robot short stories. It's all of like the overspill, all the stuff that he couldn't include in iRobot. So if you read iRobot and The Rest of the Robots, you have, I think, read all of Isaac Asimov's short stories on robotics. I may be wrong. Uh, but yeah, crack and read. I love iRobot. It's probably one of my favorite short story collections ever. Uh, right, Rest of the Robots, pretty good. I gave it a 4.5 out of five, but a weakish one. Then I read The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins, so this is like the prequel to the Hunger Games trilogy. Uh, and it follows President Snow as a young man as he participates in the 10th Hunger Games. Kind of as an attempt to humanise him, I've been saying it's a lot like uh, the when you see uh, Darth Vader as Anakin Skywalker in the uh, Star Wars prequels and he sort of slowly becomes Vader throughout them. However, the pacing was a bit off because he's just quite nice until right at the end when he just turns into an asshole. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, the first two thirds of it were good, the final third of it not so good. I gave it like a, a probably a week, four out of five. Then I read Kirk Sandblaster Faces the End by Ollie Jacobs. This is science fiction, humorous sci-fi. It's actually the last book in a series. Ollie is an indie author. He used to live in High Wycombe, although he now is in uh, Southampton. And this is the final book in the Kirk Sandblaster series. Kind of brings it all to an end. Kind of emotional in some ways. Uh, pretty good read. I would say it's a strong 3.5 out of five. Then we read then I read The Burden by Agatha Christie, that was a 3 out of 5. Um, oh, here we go, we're up to the point, ah, we're up to the point where I can show you the books now. So this is Kirk Sandblaster Faces the End. Then I read uh, The Burden by Agatha Christie, uh, although she published this under her pen name of Mary Westmacott. Uh, what does it des describe itself as? Uh, a story of consequences when love turns to obsession. Not particularly interesting, uh, the other Westmancott books have been better, this is the worst out of them so far for me, so I gave it a 3 out of 5. Uh, it focuses, one of the themes in it is like, um, jealousy of other siblings and like, uh, how like a little girl can wish their newborn baby brother dead and stuff, so yeah. Then I read Terry Pratchett, A Slip of the Keyboard, in his own words, Reflections on Life, Death and Hats. This is a bunch of Terry Fr uh, Pratchett's non-fiction collected. It also includes towards the end, uh, what's it called? Uh, Shaking Hands with Death, uh, which is a, a transcript of a lecture that he gave. I've actually read that published as its own book as well, so I skipped the reread here, even though it is very much worth reading. And uh, yeah. It's just really fascinating. It was kind of brought home to me a, a lot more as well because Pratchett was local to me. So he used to live in, uh, that's my cat. So he used to live in uh, Beaconsfield, which is like walkable from my house, probably about three, four miles away. Uh, and went to a lot of similar areas and stuff. So yeah, 4.5 out of five for me. And then I read The Tower of the Swallow by Andrzej Spukowski. This is Witcher novel number four. It was all right, probably a 3.5 out of 5. Uh, the last one, Baptism of Fire, I did really enjoy. This one, I think, sort of slowed down the pacing again. But you're not really going to get fast paced when you get Witcher books. Um, I really enjoy a lot of the morality stuff in there, and there seemed to be a little bit less of it this time. I think a lot of the decisions people made were a lot more clear cut. But overall, yeah, 3.5 out of 5. 
So there you have it. Those are all the books that I read in February 2021. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button as well. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.